Hey, budget buds. Um, welcome. If you are new here, welcome back. If you are a returning subscriber, I just feel like it has been a very long time. We're almost in the middle of January and it has been an interesting start to the year, but I am here and so I am blessed. Um, if you are new here, my name is Natasha. I am working on just saving for the big things in life on a little budget, saving, paying off debt, and just building my way to financial freedom. And for me, that is just being able to make my money work for me versus having to be a slave to what I can do because I haven't been budgeting <clears throat> in the way that I should. So, um, as this video, as the title of the video says, we're going to be doing my first paycheck breakdown for January. Of course, if you are new here, you know I always have a draft ready to go, but I am going to be using um, the Elevated Life Co. Um, workbook Duo, which is supposed to be for life and for finances. I'm just using it for finances. So I have filled out pretty much just the basics for this salary, this salary, this paycheck. Um, and then I will just be filling in the amounts so that I can spend a little bit more time talking through some things and then also showing how I determine which denominations I need when I go to the bank. You guys know I got to tilt you just a little bit. So I am, so one, this is my first paycheck. I'm going to get paid on the 14th. I am a salaried employee who gets paid semi-monthly. So I get paid twice a month. Some semi-monthly employees get paid on the 1st and the 15th. However, I get paid on the 15th and the last day of the month, whether that is the 30th or the 31st. If either one of those days falls on a Saturday or Sunday, I will get paid the Friday before. So in this instance, the 15th is a Saturday. I'm going to get paid on that Friday. My salary does not change. It remains the same. And so I am going, well, I am going to budget or expect $1,951.77. This is, and I'm going to bring you guys in just a little closer. There we go. This accounts for everything that I receive in my check after I pay my tithes and I pay myself. So I do believe in returning to God his 10% and then I pay myself a certain percentage and then whatever is left after those things come out, I then make sure I pay um, my bills or fixed expenses. I then do my cash envelopes or my variable expenses. And then we go into whatever I put towards debt and um, my sinking funds and savings. I don't expect any other income for the month and or for this paycheck or this pay period. And so my total is that 1951.77. So these are all of the fixed expenses that I'm gonna have to account for for this pay period. So that is my car insurance. And I like to budget down to the cent. I make the minimum payment on my uh, city credit card. This is my, I'm paying off, I have two credit cards left. I'm in the process of paying off Walmart. And then this is the last one that has the highest balance. And I've been using the debt snowball method. So the minimum here is $334.71 subscriptions so i just bucket all of my subscriptions into one and that is 68 10. um lauren i count as a fixed expense this is my that's my daughter this is for her savings and that is because it automatically drafts out of my account every time i get paid and so i put 25 dollars aside same for my sorority so this is how i put money aside to make donations things that we do in the community dues assessments all of those things and then last but not least, I am going to be putting, let me make sure I just have the right amount here. I'm going to be putting, 
or automatically paying $178 towards um, some medical bills. And then I have some other medical bills that I'm going to actually be taking out and putting into my medical sinking fund so that I can pay at a later point in the month. So I am going to add all of this up to get my total budgeted fixed expenses for this pay period. So that is gonna bring me to a total of $784 and 34 cents. Subtracted from and so it says negative, but that is just because of the way I did the math in the calculator. So I am left with a remainder of $1,167.43. So now that is what I have. And I'm going to work now with my variable expenses or my cash envelopes. And let's see. So these usually stay the same. Um, as I tentatively have done my budget for the next three months, so this month all the way through March, these will fluctuate just a little bit. I know for sure they're going to change in February just to account that I'll be paying, hopefully, fingers crossed, the bulk of the medical expenses and be paying those off. So I'm going to reduce my variable or my cash envelopes so that I can make sure everything goes towards that and I can get rid of that. But anyway... So these are envelopes that I keep in my wallet and my new cash envelopes came. And so I cannot wait to show you that in my cash stuffing video. Um, before I started cash stuffing, so a little story time, uh, before I discovered cash stuffing and, you know, learned a lot more about it, groceries was the first thing I wanted to tackle because it was one place that I was over budget. So groceries, gas, um, food and spending were places that I was over budget. So I decided to start with groceries. And what I would do is I would just take the $150. I started off with 100 and that wasn't enough. And so I went up to 150 and I would put it on my Cash App card. And it really made me stop and think, is that on the list? Do I need it? Do I have a coupon? Is it on sale? Because I really wanted that $150 to stretch. And so when I started my cash envelope, um, method of budgeting i just took it off my cash app card and decided to just use cash and so it has been a huge game changer um so that is how i started and here's where i am so i'm going to be putting 150 dollars um to groceries 50 to gas 50 to household we do need paper towel um 75 for spending 50 for food um, Lauren has a envelope and she gets $10. And so this is totally for whatever she wants. Typically it goes to a happy meal or something food, um, some type of food that she wants, but that is $10 for her to spend however she wants. And then miscellaneous is 15. Over the last few months, I've noticed that if I've tapped into miscellaneous, it has essentially gone into either gas or food. Those are the two places that I see me using that money. So this is going to give me a total of $400 even. And I'm simply going to technically add it to that negative balance. And so I have a remainder of $767.43. So that is then now what I am going to take into the plan. So debt and savings. So for my sinking funds, and I know that people usually put their sinking funds here in variable expenses, but it is just not enough space for me to list my sinking funds and my cash envelopes. So I'm going to list it here. Um, now, I have totaled up, so here's where my sinking funds are based on category. Um, and it has slightly changed over the course of the last few days um, as I've gone back and made adjustments. So I'm gonna come back to sinking funds. I know for the 100 envelope challenge, I'm gonna be able to stuff one envelope this pay period and it's gonna be for $80. I unfortunately am not putting anything to extra debt 
this month and extra debt right now is focused on walmart because again there are medical expenses that are taking that money that i want um that is taking the money i would usually put aside for my extra debt and i'm making sure that my medical expenses are being paid off um i prefer to pay them as i go versus waiting towards the end and they sort of accrue and accumulate um having a baby in the u.s is pretty expensive um <laughs> but that is how we are working that out okay um so let's try to add up i'm gonna move this to the side for a second and bring this here i'm gonna go ahead and so some of these have changed a lot so like for instance medical is now at three. O two. um membership is at five and so we're just gonna add all of these up Make sure you can see the calculator. So five plus 30 plus 30 is 20, 25, 30, 20, 5, 15, 50, 302, 5, 5, 15, 5, and 100. So this ends up being $662. Again, part of why medical is getting so much in that fund is simply because I have an expense or two more expenses that are going to get paid at the end of the month into February. And I don't want that money just sitting there and I forget and it goes into something else. And so I'm going to pull that money out, let it sit in the sinking fund until it is time to pay that bill. And so if I go back, I had 767.43 remaining. I'm going to subtract what goes into my sinking funds, subtract what I'm putting into my 100 envelope. And this does work out because then my account buffer is 25.43. And so if I add all of this together, 662 plus 80 plus 25.43, that is a total make sure you all can see this yep of seven hundred dollars sixty seven uh seven hundred and sixty seven dollars and forty three cents which is going to leave me with a zero based budget meaning that i have accounted for every single dollar there are no dollars that don't have a job and so that is super 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 important so this account buffer this 2543 the goal is to allow $25 per paycheck to remain in my account so that by the end of the year, that is going to be a total of $600 that has been built into my account buffer, not accounting for any extra money that I may or may not get throughout the year and so that I can start to have a solid account buffer. All right, something that I haven't normally done and that is just because I haven't had the template to do that is my paycheck denomination breakdown so this is how i can then go to the bank when i get paid and tell them exactly what i need so that each sinking fund gets the right amount um, i've only had instances where i think two instances where they didn't have enough of one bill and so i just had to figure out of the smaller bills they gave me how to break that down so i'm really happy that i have this in this um budget planner so babe is going to get five dollars and i am going to do that in five singles so i'm simply going to place a five under the one dollar column um, birthdays gets 30. i'm going to do that in three tens um that way for all of the birthday categories so my birthday lauren's birthday and general birthdays i can put um ten dollars towards each of those things um car gets 30 and this is just for car maintenance and that is going to be in the biggest bills possible so 120 and then 110 um christmas gets 20 so i'm gonna start off saving small since i'm not doing a savings challenge for christmas and in the latter half of the year i am going to bulk this one up so that i can have um and give my family a really good christmas so i'm gonna go ahead and speed through the rest of this 
so that we can get to the end and talk about um, how many bills I need, what that totals to, and then what I actually use to take to the bank. All right, so I went ahead and filled in all of the sinking funds and there, well, I had that filled in, filled in the amount, and then I went ahead and broke it down based on the bills that I need. So for instance, for $100 bills, I, and this equals to $662. So I need 300, I need 150, so for 20s, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For 10s, I need three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For 20s, I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. For 10s, I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then for ones, I need seven. So this comes up to, make sure you guys can still see that. This is 300. We're also gonna make sure this adds to what it needs to. This is 50. This is 180. This is 80. This is 45. And then this is seven. And it does equal to 600 and, oops, sorry guys, you weren't in frame for that. I apologize, $662. And so now that I have that, what I will take to the bank is this cash, da uh, cash down, cash breakdown um, sticky note. This I got from All Things Planned. She is on YouTube, Instagram, and has an Etsy shop by the same name. And so it has the bills here, um, the tally, which I will simply just put what the bill quantity is and the amount. And that is what I will take to the bank. The one thing that I am forgetting to put on here um, is my cash envelopes. And so I'm probably going to have to... Well, what I, I instead of whiting it out, I guess what I can do because my denominations for my cash envelopes are fairly um, simple. I just go biggest bill. So I will simply just add it to this versus having to white this out and make a mistake. But normally my cash envelopes would go on here as well so that I can have a total breakdown of what I need because this is what I'm putting in my sinking funds plus... This is what's gonna go into my cash envelopes. Um, and so that is what I am going to be stuffing um, on tomorrow. So please tune in for that. And I will have some bonus content this week, usually because I am a semi-monthly budgeter and I don't do any, um, I don't have any side hustle, so I don't have any side income coming in. It's usually you're going to get videos in the middle of the month, so anywhere between the 13th and the 16th of the month. And you're going to get videos at the end of the month, which is usually my end of the month binge -a And so I am going to have some extra content for you guys just to uh, keep you all coming back and keep you interested. So definitely um, like comment and subscribe i would love to know how your budgeting journey is going at the start of 2022 um yeah so that is all that i have for you today i will see you tomorrow in my cash stuffing so let me just there we go until next time bye budget buds